Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's cool fact of the day is that penises can actually break. Now, this will be a mostly G-rated episode, and we might say that word again a few times, but only in a medical context. But if that's a problem for the people listening in your car right now, well, then you'll have to listen to this later because it's going to be an awesome episode. In fact, you should probably watch it on YouTube. You can go to bulletproof.com slash YouTube to get a link to the YouTube channel uh, because I'm recording this live in, uh, in a medical what do you call this, a medical theater thing? I'm actually wearing scrubs, I'm wearing my cool True Dark glasses, and my face looks all weird because I just have all kinds of needles in it. <laughs> Today's guest is Dr. Amy Killen, and the other cool fact of the day is that her middle initial is B, so her name is actually Amy B. Killen, <laughs> and I think she should have a career as a rapper. So. <laughs> it's my second choice career. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Amy is a physician, who focuses on, well, uh, she focuses on all sorts of stem cell related anti-aging procedures, but very specifically uh, sexual health, as well as some cosmetic stuff. And in this episode today, we're going to talk about what stem cells can do to, uh, to put more wood in your pencil. Is, is that a medical term, that Amy? That is close to being a medical term. All right. <laughs> Uh, and this is for men and women, uh, by the way. Like, there are different treatments for men and women, but there's a bunch of new research about what it does for men. So we're going to talk about those because I had this done. Uh, Amy uh, injected some stem cells into places that uh, would make everyone, everyone male <laughs> cringe anyway and talked about it at the Bulletproof Conference last year. Yeah, we've, and you've, we've, you videotaped it. Yes, but not the Unbeknownst juicy Unbeknownst to me, yeah, not, the, not all of it. <laughs> just, just what happened to my toes when the needle went in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, how did you get into doing stem cells in people's nether regions? Um, so, it's kind of interesting. My background is actually emergency medicine. So, okay. I did ER for a number of years. Um, and then, several years ago, decided I was more interested in prevention than in treating, you know, uh, sort of band-aid approach to healthcare. Um, became interested in preventative medicine and studied that for a while. And then kind of uh, as I did that, I learned more about regenerative medicine because it's you know you're having your own body be able to renew itself and treat itself. And I think that's pretty awesome. So those two kind of go hand in hand. Prevention and regeneration um, to me are kind of you know the same type of medicine. It's interesting. My approach is the same way, and I'm an anti-aging guy, even though I'm not officially medical in any way, shape, or form. I am wearing scrubs, so if you're watching on video, you're like, okay, he looks medical. But <laughs> you know, I, I've spent almost 20 years run, running an anti-aging nonprofit group because I needed to regenerate myself because I weighed 300 pounds because I was having cognitive dysfunction because I had arthritis and all this other like old people stuff. Right. I had it when I was young. But for an ER doctor where you're mostly like, there's blood, like there's trauma, <laughs> like they're dying, you know, uh, how did you, like what, what caused you to shift? So I was, you know, I worked in the ER for 10 years um, with crazy schedules and all kinds of things. And after I had my kids, they were little and I was working crazy schedules and getting up at three in the morning to go to work every day and, you know, getting three or four hours of sleep every day and drinking, you know, literally 50 ounces of Diet Coke every day um, and several Monster Energy drinks to get through the day. And then I had insomnia and I couldn't sleep. So I'm popping pills for sleeping. And I remember getting to one point, you know, we used to have all these, uh, we'd have all these overdoses come in the ER and my ER friends and I would kind of joke and um, you know we always ask the overdose you know why do you take so many sleeping pills and I would always say I was just trying to sleep and we never believed them because usually oftentimes they were trying to hurt themselves but I remember talking to one of my friends and I said I said to my friend I said if I get brought in the ER you know for an overdose I really was just trying to sleep but I was taking <laughs> handfuls oh my God. of sleeping pills and at one point I was just like you know this is this is not healthy, like there's gotta be a better way. So I started trying to figure out how to make myself healthier, and in the meantime, and then you know, then eventually decided that was what I wanted to do for other people too. All right, have you been using your own stem cells on your face? Um, I have used them on my face, Because yes. there's no possible way you worked in the ER for 10 years. You, <laughs> like, you look like you're about 30. Like, Thank like you. Really, <laughs> no, you, you really do, and I'm not saying that to just you know, flatter you or something. So people who work in the ER for 10 years, 
look old always because it's, it's yeah. horrible for you biologically. You got bad lights, you got circadian it's disruption, horrible. lots of stress, like huge increased risk in heart disease yeah. and people who work, um, you know, those overnight shifts and, and ER workers and things as well. So, and you're a mom. So did you look this healthy when you were, do you have like naturally amazing genes? Like, did you look this I, healthy when you, I think when you I had some good genes, okay. um, as, but I, I definitely don't think I was as healthy. Um, when I was working, I was, you know, I was, you're always stressed out. Even when you're not working, you're thinking about the patients that you, you know, did, did I, did I do the right thing? Are okay. they still alive? Are they going to come back tomorrow? Um, sicker than they are today. And then lack of sleeping. And then, you know, it's just, it's, it piles on each other. You have the high cortisol all the time. You've got the the insomnia and the not sleeping and the, it's just, it's, it's just a mess. So okay. yeah, I don't think I was, um, I definitely wasn't as happy and I think I was probably less healthy in general. Okay. So you, you're the picture of health now. <laughs> How many years ago did you start doing stem cells? Not on yourself, I mean, um, but like as a It's been what, three, three, four, well, I've, I've been doing platelet rich plasma, which is, you know, the growth factor part okay. for about four years and then stem cells themselves a little over two, two to three years, somewhere okay. in there. Let's talk about platelet-rich plasma because this is an anti-aging treatment, but it's also regenerative treatments. Mm -hmm. Like for injuries, athletes started doing this. What is platelet-rich plasma? So platelet-rich plasma are, is basically taking your platelets from your blood. So I would get your blood from you, draw it. We did that yesterday. Exactly. And you centrifuge it in some special, some special kits where you can isolate the platelets. And so you get these platelets that are about seven to 10 times uh, that of whole blood. So they're really concentrated platelets. The platelets themselves have a lot of growth factors inside them. All of mm -hmm. your platelets do. Because you think about it, platelets are, they're, they're for healing, right? So when you, when you cut your arm and you cut your, your, your arm, um, the platelets are the first ones in and they send growth factors out and tell everyone around them, hey, we got to heal this tissue. So there's growth factors for all different things, you know, to increase blood flow, to increase nerve regeneration, to increase um, all different types of cells and collagen. And, and so they do all kinds of things. So what we do is we use those growth factors that are in the platelets um, in different parts of the body. And so it's, regen it's regenerative. It's been around for you know, 30 years, um, but uh, we can, you use them for joints certainly, which has been done for a long time. And then I use them specifically for, uh, for skin regeneration, for hair regeneration, and for sexual optimization. All right, so that's platelet-rich plasma, and what are stem cells? Stem cells are the cells themselves. Um, stem cells are the cells in your body, on every sort, in every organ in your body, that are capable of duplicating themselves as well as differentiating, which means they can kind of give rise to other types of cells. So you can have, um, you know, stem cells, one type of stem cell is capable maybe of giving rise to several different types of cells, which is what's interesting about stem cells. Um, so they're, they're unique in that they, they are repairing your body. And so we can use them in regenerative medicine to repair um, different parts of the body and make it, make it better, make it newer. Just to be really clear too, if you're listening, we're talking about stem cells that come from your own body. We're not talking about uh, stem cells like from aborted fetal tissue, which was state of the art 30 years ago, I think. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's not how stem cells are done today, as far as I understand it, right? There's still research being done on all different other types of stem cells okay. and, and you know, growing organs and all things like that. But what I'm talking about is stem cells that you get from your own body, okay. mostly from fat. What about like sheep stem cells and umbilical stem cells and placental stem cells and things uh, like that? I mean, there certainly is research with in human with human umbilical and human placental stem cells that are, there's some promising results. I I wouldn't use animal you know derived stem cells um, at this point, but there are some um, some interesting studies looking at uh, umbilical cells in humans and using them in, in different humans. Okay. So let's get down to. Uh... There's so many fun things I could say here. <laughs> I get down to business? No. Like, let's get down to brass tacks? No. I, I have no idea what to say, but let's talk penis. Yes. All right. You focus specifically. Did I make you blush? A little bit. I think That's I did. That's awesome. Yeah. That's hard to do. <laughs> All right. So when we... Uh, one of the things that you're you're focusing on a lot here is erectile dysfunction. What is the role of stem cells or platelet-rich plasma with... Uh, erections. So erections are, you know, they're very complex. Um, but what's interesting to me about them? I'm sorry, it's my, <laughs> that wasn't a, that was that was. A... They're very complex. I don't say they don't seem that hard. Look, well, like, I can't say that. I just <laughs> you did, you did say it. <laughs> All right. They are complex, um, but like anything in your body, the cells that cause you know, that. that 
that allow you to have erections, the smooth muscle cells and the cells that line the blood vessels, um, they age and um, in some cases you get you get death of them, you get apoptosis of these the smooth muscle cells. And so that's one of the things that causes um, erectile dysfunction. So if you can do something um, or some things, you, you know, maybe multiple things, which is what I like to do, to try to um, keep those cells alive longer or to uh, induce new cells coming in, new stem cells that can, that can increase blood flow and um, increase nerve response, then you have the ability potentially to you know, improve symptoms of erectile dysfunction. All right. So what would you do with stem cells in a penis then? So you would inject them into the penis. Um, there have been a number of animal studies, uh, over a dozen, um, and now we actually have at least four human studies that have used uh, stem cells of different types of stem cells. There's some from, they've used fat, they've used bone marrow, they've used umbilical cells, they've used placental cells. So there's all different types being used. But taking the stem cells um, and then actually injecting it into the corpus cavernosum, which is the, you know, the, uh, the little tubes on the sides of the penis that, that allow the blood to flow in, and that, that's kind of where you get, how you get the erections. So you inject it into those areas. So when I was here a year ago, uh, you injected me. Now, I'm a human guinea pig, so I didn't have issues with erectile dysfunction, but I'm like, I, I believe I came in and I said, where in the human body can you put the stem cells you just took out? I'll have one of those. Right. So you and Harry like had me like strapped down like Wolverine, like, Okay, I wasn't it was exactly like down. that, yeah. But like ev <laughs> everywhere I've ever been injured, I, there must have been like hundreds of injections. I don't know, I passed out. Uh, but Three times. Three times. I set a record for <laughs> passing out because I turned down the nitrous oxide. Uh, oh. But I, I did capture on video uh, where I, like the, the blanket is tastefully covering the, the site of injection. <laughs> but uh, you have this ginormous needle that was like 18 inches long. No, it, it wasn't it, that big. It looked that big. <laughs> It is a 27 gauge needle, which is very thin. It's very thin. It's okay. very thin, um, and you know we don't go in very far, about okay. this far. But it, you know, it hurts a little bit. But uh, it's not for most men. It's not that painful. It's the it, idea. It wasn't. It's the idea of what is going to happen in somewhere very sensitive that people don't like. The injections you did in my face yesterday. By the way, I had my stem cells injected in my face and hair because uh, I don't want to go bald like all the guys in my family. So. And I'm 44. I still have my hair. So like I'm feeling pretty good about it. But I'm like, I'll do preventative maintenance because it's easier to prevent than it is to reverse. And so it actually wasn't that painful. But it, yeah, the thought was like, ah. Yeah. Okay. And, and we do numb beforehand, by yeah. the way, with some numbing cream. So right. it, it's, you know. It's that was also mild. not that pleasant. You're like, there's nothing down there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you can't feel anything. Like it's kind of weird with that much lidocaine in there. That's funny. I made you blush again. You did. I know. This, this is, is awesome. This I don't is... normally get to people blushing in interviews. I try, but all right. Hmm. So we uh, did the injection and people were saying, well, what's the difference? And I'm like, things are more youthful, <laughs> but because I didn't have erectile dysfunction, yeah. uh, I'm hoping that, well, I never get it, but I, I would... I, there's been times when my testosterone was really low where I didn't have erectile dysfunction, but I just had less desire. Right. Right. And I don't know that I, I noticed a, a difference like in desire because like, I think that my hormones are, are healthy right now. At least that's what the numbers say. And like things seem pretty normal. Uh, you can certainly modify desire if you take too much like aromatase inhibitors and things like that. And I'm occasionally, um, I've taken things that stop my testosterone from going to estrogen because apparently every pathway in my body that can go to estrogen does just by default. It's like all the guys in my family have man boobs, like it's a genetic thing. And so I, I've, I've experienced that, but overall I haven't seen like, oh, I, you know, I, I can't get it up, hasn't been in my vocabulary. Um, what do you find if you do this on younger people? Is this just a preventative thing or is it just because I'm a human guinea pig? I'm like, I'll try that. Cause... I mean, you know, most of the patients that I do it on the, are gonna, do have some degree of erectile dysfunction. Okay. Um, and it's the average age where people start uh, doing this. Well, you know, they, it, the numbers show that 40% of men in their 40s have some degree of ED. Wow. Um, and what's interesting about that is, you know, it's a, it's a progressive disease, which means that there were, there were problems with the, with the, the, the cells, endothelial cells, the smooth, the smooth muscle cells, years before that, maybe even decades before that. It's kind of like heart disease. Like, you know, you don't, you have, it takes a long time to have symptoms, but, but you're, you're doing damage for many, many years. Um, in fact, a lot of people, you know, the th same things that cause 
heart problems and heart disease problems, cardiovascular disease, are the same things that are also going to cause most commonly erectile dysfunction. So it's a progressive thing, but by the mid 40s, 40% of people have um, dysfunction. Okay. So to answer your question, that most people I'm treating do have some some form of dysfunction. And the studies that have been done um, in both animals and humans are on people who have dysfunction. Um, and what's interesting with these studies, I mean, they do they cause some, and, and like in rats, for instance, we don't do this in humans, but in rats, you know, they cause serious like cavernosal nerve. They crush the nerve that supplies wow. the penis, these poor little rats. Um, and they crush the nerve and then they do these injections of stem cells and then they eventually sacrifice the rats and and look at them and in this in the stem, in the in the rats that got the stem cells they actually see regeneration of the nerves um, and regeneration of all this you know the signaling um, the the blood flow is there so even like pretty major major um, but, but injuries for, and problems for most guys it's not it's not a that nerve bad. problem right no, it's, it's, a it's blood usually flow a blood problem. flow problem okay. and in the in the males that they don't in human studies have been done on men who've had prostate surgeries okay. and have ed from that um, as well as diabetic men and with diabetes it's going to be usually a blood flow problem okay. um, so and then you know and in all in the four studies that have been done four or five they've all shown some benefits at least you know half or at least more of the men have had a return of function or, you know or at least some function Function, which is pretty good if you don't have any function to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, uh, so stem cells are, can, I think can be very effective. I don't think it's one of the, th the kind of thing where you just do one thing and you're done. I think you want to do sort of a multi, you know, uh, faceted approach to ED. And stem cells I think is a great one thing to do, but you should also do some of the other things that are out there. Like what? Like. Um, there are some really cool uh, new therapies with um, pressure wave therapy or shock wave therapy. That doesn't sound pleasant. I know. That shock wave is not the best name. Let's call it <laughs> pressure wave. Um, <laughs> that sounds a little more pleasant. So, these, there, I mean, there are over 40 studies in Europe and Asia using these, essentially using acoustic waves um, to kind of. Uh, for lack of a better word, to zap the penis. And uh, what they see with this is that you get uh, big increases in um, nitric oxide production. I'm trying to think of what song you play through the acoustic <laughs> wave, and it's gotta be Queen. We are the champions of the world. Like that, that has to be the most stimulating song out there, right? Uh, and these, these, don't, these don't hurt, contrary to what it sounds like. It's not like electrotherapy oh, okay. or something. It's just a small little zap. It's basically but... ultrasound kind of stuff. It's, that... it's, ultra, it's sound waves that are being delivered, and um, they cause microtrauma, and then you get, you get upregulation of um, some of the enzymes that increase your nitric oxide production, okay. which is great for any part of your body. Um, but nitric oxide, your nitric <clears> oxide, if you don't know, is a vasodilator, so it opens up your blood vessels, so you get better blood flow in, and it also opens up the... Um, the, it also improves the health of the these smooth muscle cells that are important to be able to keep your erections. So it can help you get erections and it can help you keep erections. So we want nitric oxide sure. uh, really everywhere. It's good for blood pressure, it's good for all kinds of things. But um, in the penis, these pressure weight treatments can increase that. And then it also could increase um, some growth factors like, um, like a vascular endothelial growth, fa growth factor, which actually improves, increases blood flow, not just increasing it now, but actually it forms new blood vessels um, going into the penis. So you've got better blood flow, you've got you know, more of this nitric oxide, more ability to get erections and keep erections. And this, these treatments, you do a series of six to 12 treatments mm -hmm. um, over the course of a couple of months, and people are having lasting improvements you know, out to a year or more, not needing their Viagra or Cialis wow. sometimes. Like it's it's an actually and, regenerative treatment. Do you have that here? Um, yes, I, I, I just got it, one? I just got it. Um, I wanna try it, but when, I do when have we're done, it. can I try it? Well, I have it in my car. <laughs> <laughs> but you can at some point. All right. Um, but it's really cool. And so, and you can also take men in the studies that they've done, you can take men who didn't respond to Viagra or Cialis or those kind of things. Like they've stopped responding to those things now and they just they don't work for them. And you can do these treatments with them. And in the studies, about 70 to 75% of the men were turned into responders. Wow. So, That's you know, huge. maybe it doesn't cure them, but it gets them to the point where now they're able to, you know, to have intercourse and to have a normal uh, sex life. And that's pretty huge. Now, how much does a machine like that cost? The machine itself, it's yeah. a in it's a, it's a in the like a, in a doctor's office machine, sure. 
Um, Doesn't mean I couldn't buy one on eBay. Yeah, you could. I think that they're about thirty thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. Maybe I couldn't buy one on eBay. But the, right. but the yeah. tree, you know, the treatments can be yeah. are a couple of thousand dollars for all all so, six of them okay. usually. And if you think about that, Cialis and Viagra are fifteen twenty dollars a pill. Oh. Um, that's actually not not unusual. Ish. So you spend two thousand yeah. dollars and you get permanent ability to just at least for a year or two. We okay. don't, you know, that's kind of what we see in studies is about a year or two. Right. In, and you can do it as a preventative because you know you know every person every guy as they get older you're starting to have some death of these smooth muscle cells you, i mean you can help it by doing by being healthy like you are by doing your antioxidants and your good living and your good diet and all that but those cells do die eventually okay. and if you can do things that help to stimulate and keep them alive then that's helpful the nitric oxide that you're that you're boosting is actually a mitochondrial booster in mm -hmm. those stem cells in I mean, in the in the cells in the in the penis as well, and so you're it's kind of helping to prevent that cell death or apoptosis, okay. um, which is cool. Now, when you injected my, uh, I was going to call my little guy, but that's just not okay. I, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> See now, I've just I have I have no shame. <laughs> You uh, haven't had shave in a long time. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's a fair point. Anyway, when you injected my, uh, you know, see, now I could be all, all graphic. I'm just not going to. When you injected my penis, uh, <clears throat> I was. Uh, you, you also gave me some interesting things to take home. A pump. Yes. What's the deal with the pump? The pump is, you know, it's the same. It's the kind of idea, same kind of idea. You're trying to it. it increases um, blood flow and it induces sort of micro injuries, micro tears. And so by pairing the pump with something like PRP or these stem cell um, uh, procedures, the idea is that you're, you're combining two different modalities that can, um, can help with the regeneration in there. Um, so that's what the idea is. And, and the pump, if, if you're wondering what the heck is a pump, it's like a big tube that you put around <laughs> the thing yeah and then you squeeze a little bulb and it like creates a vacuum so things get really swollen and big and it comes with a little cheesy looking little snap leather strap to keep the blood in there longer <laughs> i was like seriously this is so like yeah. adult bookstore looking it is <laughs> uh, but it was this was medical grade and all and now you had mentioned that um, if I followed the protocol, which frankly I didn't, because it seemed like a lot of it work. It is a little bit. It's a it, lot of work. It was like for thirty days, you had to pump, and you have to like get it hard, and then like put this thing on, and you just like pump it until it's like big, and <laughs> big, <laughs> exactly, <Huge>. really big, <laughs> bigly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and then that's that creates micro tears inside the corpus cavernosum and right. since there's stem cells present they'll heal those and it'll be like thicker and bigger but on the other hand i'm like i'm not really that worried about that and i'm like married and i know things things are working pretty good it takes good. a lot of work and yeah, yeah i get it I, I did it twice i'm like you know what yeah. like i'd rather go do cryotherapy <laughs> like sorry <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the pumping has its own utility i mean people use pumps and there there is good um you know there's some evidence to support that pumping by itself um can be helpful can uh, for erection quality for size just to like get that. the blood, the blood the vessels blood all the way open. And all again, right. you know, the little micro tears. You're gonna, you're gonna heal that on your own, even if you haven't had okay. um, stem cell or PRP procedures. But they are not easy. So I, that's, I'm, I'm kind of going away from doing the pumping quite as much and trying to focus more on, you know, maybe doing like the pressure wave therapy where I can do six treatments and you're done for a year. And the treatments take ten minutes and they're not painful and it's, you know, that, it's super easy. That's one of the variables in biohacking that oftentimes gets ignored is that it's return on time spent. Because yeah. I could spend 12 hours a day hacking myself and I'd probably like look really amazing and get younger, but I wouldn't run Bulletproof. <laughs> I wouldn't play with my kids. I'd be like, all marriage. I do is like, I, yeah, I have like a little hamster wheel of biohacking and I just went on that. So yeah. the idea is what gives me the most return. And you're just saying, look, you know, six treatments with pressure wave is probably more return than like regularly pumping, which I found was just not worth the trouble. Yeah, no, um, I, I agree with that. I think that's probably true. Okay. All right. So let's switch gears and let's talk about one of my favorite topics, women. Yes. <laughs> I happen to be married to one. It's amazing. So <clears throat> there are also stem cell procedures that you can do on women and I would say uh, I've I saw some pretty shocking results uh, from that. And now my wife Lana, and if if, uh, if you're listening to this in your car, or whatever, you can go to the 
uh, Bulletproof, I think it's bulletproofconference.com. We have the talk you gave, mm -hmm. the talk Dr. Harry Adelson gave about stem cells, and Lana's talk, uh, my wife, Dr. Lana, about the same sort of stuff. So like we're pretty open about, yeah, we had some stem cells <laughs> put in <laughs> and all the, all the juicy bits. And uh, I'm just, I don't want to say anything that she hasn't said on stage, so I'll do my best. But anyway, uh, you injected both of us. And what's your experience on injecting stem cells in women? Where do you inject them and what does it do? So there are two injections in women. You numb them up first, um, but you could do a clitoral injection, mm -hmm. and then you do a, a sort of anterior vaginal, upper vaginal wall, just a couple of, uh, of centimeters in. Like by the G-spot, Kind of by the G-spot. I mean, you don't have to spine the actual spot, but you're injecting into the space that's above the G-spot, and okay. um, the, the area up there is also the area around the urethra. So you kind of you kind of bathe that whole area. So so things that we see, um, you know, certainly improving the vaginal tissue, making it more healthy, making it more youthful, um, perhaps tightening it, maybe having better lubrication. Um, but and then some women also, uh, and, you know, and then certain certainly things like improved orgasm strength and abilities. All um, of those happened. I'll just say. Yeah. <laughs> and then some women have noticed symptoms of improvement. Symptoms and improvement of uh, of stress urinary incontinence. Um, people who you know can't jump on trampolines or go for a run without kind of peeing a little bit, um, be because you're injecting the space around the urethra. Um, some of those stem cells and PRP are, you know, kind of getting into that that area that is responsible for uh, keeping that sphincter tight, and so some people have reported improvements in incontinence as well. Okay, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And this is I, I forgot to ask, how much does it cost for a guy to get stem cells? The stem cells or the PRP? Uh, well, let's do both. How much for each one? The, I, well, had, to get the stem yeah, cells uh -huh. is about thirty five hundred dollars to, to, to get, take them out to of get your them body. out okay. to process to make to get them out of your fat and process okay. them, um, and then the proceed then the injections themselves. Um, I think it's about fifteen hundred for the injections for men, okay. and about the same for women. Okay, so you're looking at really about five thousand dollars. Right. Okay. So PRP that's, is less expensive. Okay, you can just how do much PRP. Is PRP? PRP is just blood, so that's just all you're paying for is the injections. I think it's about fifteen hundred. Okay, so that's a good way to start. Yeah, uh, and I, I've had PRP. Um, Dr. Robin Benson did PRP, like in my knee, mm -hmm. and I, I felt some uh, I felt some improvements from that, but it wasn't as strong as I got from stem cells. But I don't think I might have had might have had PRP in the penis once as well after you did your thing. Okay, uh, <laughs> I think that was Kristen in Florida, U.S. stem cell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, PRP is a great, it's kind of like yeah. a stem cell fertilizer. So, right. you know, it's, it's certainly appropriate, you know, if you have uh, improvement, maybe a partial improvement in something with stem cells, then you can kind of boost it with PRP. And uh, you get the same growth factors and same signaling to the stem cells without having to actually put in more cells. Okay. So, and also it's a little bit painful to get stem cells taken out. If you have them, it, and this is very gray area right now, but there right. are some places where you can get them cultured and stored and banked. And then there are other places where every time you have to do liposuction, right. and that hurt. Frankly, the the little where the needle went, it didn't hurt that much for me. But where you go to get the fat out of the tissues above the kidneys, uh, that hurt more than any of the injection sites. Um, especially like the the penis wasn't sore like t a day later. It was yeah, completely you can fine. get some bruising and some soreness for a few days yeah. from the liposuction. Mm -hmm. It's a mini liposuction, so you're not taking out you know huge quantities of fat. Yeah. But um, but even still, you have to kind of get in there with a cannula and get the fat, and um, you know it, it hurts. It's you're sore for a few days. And if if you really want to know what that looks like, I Facebook lived my liposuction once. So if you go through my Facebook <laughs> feed, you'll find me answering questions while there's a big thing going in there. It was <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, and all right, so for women uh, and for men, it's going to be about five grand with stem cells, fifteen hundred with PRP. And is there a certain age where you'd recommend that people just go straight to stem cells, or is like PRP seems I more mean, accessible? I don't think it's really been proven yet. Okay. Um, there, you know, there have been studies done. Um, most of the studies are in men, honestly. You know, and I think that's not shocking. People tend to study male erectile dysfunction a lot more than female sexual dysfunction. Um, but you know, in men, there have been studies that have shown benefit of stem cells for erectile mm -hmm. dysfunction, and there have been studies that have shown benefit of PRP. Um, but there haven't been like head-to-head -head comparisons, or you know, which is better. <laughs> yes, That's you said fault. that. That is my own fault. <laughs> My blushing again. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is the best interview ever. <laughs> 
so I, yeah, there's a lot to be worked out, like to figure out what's the, you know, how much better are stem cells and how much, okay. it, what, I mean, all those kind of questions, I think they're still, we're still going to learn more all the time. All right. Now, have you tried the shockwave therapy on women? I, um, that is something that I'm going to be investigating. Okay. Um, and that is actually on my, it's on my list uh, in the next few months to start to, do, to start investigating because it's a little bit, you know, women are a little bit more complicated than men as far as sexual, uh, sexual function and dysfunction. You know, it's not just about blood flow for women, which is mm-hmm. kind of what it's about for men. Um, but blood flow is pretty helpful for women. Yeah, you have to have blood flow. <laughs> But there are a lot of other things, you know, there, the, the you know, mood and social factors. Did and, you buy you know, them flowers? There's all, yeah, exactly. Did you help with breakfast dishes and all of that? That all plays into it for women. Um, so they're a little more complicated, but I do think that there, it's certainly possible that the same technology would work for women. I mean, this technology, by the way, it, it's it's primarily used for joints and for musculoskeletal pain. Um, it's a great regenerative treatment for those things. Um, and there are studies even using it for cardiac patients who have, um, you know, cardiac dysfunction. They're, they're just not pumping well, and they'll do a series of these treatments, and all of a sudden their heart's pumping better. Um, so yeah. it's useful for all different things. It's like stem cells, which is mm-hmm. why I like it. It's regenerative um, for different things in your body. What about like red and infrared LED lights or lasers on men and women's sex organs? I have not done any. I don't know much about. I mean, I know I like. I know that there's some value in light and regenerative properties for skin, and and certainly do. Uh, advocate for some of the um, skin rejuvenation and, and hair as well using light, but I haven't I haven't learned much or read much about it for they, they stimulate stuff. nitric oxide as well mm-hmm. and add mitochondrial energy. So uh, I can tell you that the medical laser I have, whether it's applied to men or women, has pretty profound effects hmm. uh, on both function and sensation. Okay. Uh, it, it even works on nipples. I mean, like it, it enhances sensation pretty dramatically, That's and interesting. probably blood flow too. I would, I would yeah. be surprised if it didn't. Just knowing the mechanism of action, yeah, it, the infrared light changes the viscosity of water, and mitochondria work better. Mitochondria work better. Pretty much everything. Works cells better. work better. Yeah. yeah. Get ATP and production right. and such. Yeah, I think it's worth. I think I'm. I think it's worth investigating, and I think um, adding all of these different things together is is a great way to help patients. To you know, not requiring medications and the side effects of of those medications. And that's one of the things that I just discovered through my own path is that we have this this western bias like i'm gonna find the one thing that works and the thing is if you have like two thumbtacks in your hand and you only take one of them out you'll never find the one thing that works like you have to take them both out right right so i finally was just like you know what i don't actually care what works i'll just do everything that works all at once right right and if i get great (laughs) results maybe i'll stop doing the things that are hardest (laughs) or most expensive right and and eventually i'll arrive at okay this combination of five things works and that seems so much more effective and sometimes you get effects that you just would never get from testing you know this one thing so yeah I, I agree. Uh, in fact I can say I did use uh, the red and infrared light uh, to speed healing after I do after any kind of procedure so uh, when I get home tomorrow, I'll be putting red in front of my face. Right? Yeah, and I do that to myself as well. I love okay. I love the um, the red and in near infrared lights uh, for the face. And of course, there's also good studies for hair regeneration mm-hmm. using the, the low level light therapy. Um, and there are a number of companies that make you know the laser caps and and capillus and different the caps with the lights in them um, because of the same thing that you're you're helping with that regeneration of, uh, of ATP and cells are, are healthier. So, so there's a new product. It's a pump with red and infrared lights in it. I love. It. I know. Nobody steal that. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody steal it. I'll try it. Send me one, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So with uh, with women, uh, the the women I've talked to, including Lana, who've had the they call it the O shot, and for guys they call it the P shot, and they've I mean they've profound differences, like differences certainly that I noticed, but but you know it's like going from forty five to twenty five again. Uh, and I didn't necessarily notice that huge of a difference on um, myself, but I don't know that I had, you know, early onset erectile dysfunction or anything going on. Um, but still, like it was, it was you know nicer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a small upgrade, uh, and. I think that you're saying there aren't as many studies on that? There aren't as many. There is a, one, one small study with PRP only in women that mm-hmm. showed that about 85% of women have improvement. But that was, you know, it was only, it was a small number of women. Okay. Um, 
And there are some studies using stem cells and looking at um, urinary incontinence improvements in women and injecting them right around the urethra that have shown significant improvements in incontinence. Um, but I haven't seen much else yet. I know people are working on it, and there's a lot of people interested in you know in the field. Um, but it's I think it's taking a little bit more time to get those studies done. Okay. What else should people know about if they're looking at dealing with erectile dysfunction or I'll just say female, well, I don't know, there's so many different things that go wrong with women <laughs> yeah. down there. <laughs> one of the many problems that you can have. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, lifestyle is a huge one for everything, okay. obviously. Um, like I said before, keeping your blood vessels healthy, in, you know, in your heart is, is important. Same thing, same blood vessels, different blood vessels, but same type of blood vessels are also in your penis and your clitoris and all the areas. So you want to keep all of that healthy. So making sure you get your you know, nitric oxide enough, you know, all the things that boost, ni that boost nitric oxide, your foods like your beets and the things like that are important. There are some good supplements that have been shown in studies to, to actually do a good job boosting nitric oxide, you know, certainly other therapies as well. Um, so all of those things are good. And then, you know, you're, you're keeping your antioxidants up and eating well and being healthy in general. Um, anything that keeps your body healthy is going to keep your, uh, your sort of organs, your female and male organs healthy. So those, you should continue to do those things and then we'll keep looking for other therapies that we can add um, to the regimen as well. Okay. Be more specific. What? That like, was such a doctor answer. Well, I give me three things I can do. So I like there's a, there's a supplement called Neo Forty okay. that I love. It's a, it's a beetroot supplement. It's okay. a beetroot supplement, but he actually there's actually at least nine good papers published on it in like it's mostly for hypertension and you know other yeah. things, but but I think that that's a great supplement, um, and I recommend that to all my uh, male patients especially that are have ED problems. And, and I want to add something to yeah. that. If you're using mouthwash that's antibacterial, Absolutely. it will affect your nitric oxide production. And acid blockers like PPIs, mm -hmm. like uh, omeprazole and things like that, Prilosec, um, affect your uh, affect that as well because of the, the decreased acidity in your stomach, and you can't make the nitric oxide as well. So, um, so yeah, so there are a lot of things like that that okay. um, that kind of go along with the nitric oxide and I, being able to make it and, and keep it. Even the Neo Forty, the it's a chewable supplement because you have to have it in your mouth, not just in your gut. Mm -hmm. And some people like they eat it and then they like use their scope mouthwash and it's like no wonder there's no wood in your yeah pencil. it's a so, yeah it's, a, it's you want to just kind of let it dissolve in your mouth because yeah. it, it gets in your salivary glands and that's where the first step of the nitrate reduction is happening um so yeah so i like that supplement one, and okay. other ones you know so, yeah, but, but that's the one that i've seen a lot of um, research on um you know i like for cardiovascular health in general this is some of the good antioxidants things like coq10 um, resveratrol vitamin c you know that okay. sort of just basic level things but that they, stuff's all in headstrong when you book yeah we, and we know that yeah. they're going to do do good i just thought that name body. could have a whole different meaning it was, it, <laughs> i was going for your brain guys your brain <laughs> it could be used for other things too um that's two okay um and i mean I, anything healthy that you're doing you're good you're exercising your diet is huge um, you know, not eating sugar and things like that is really important, we know, for all different cells in your body. It's kind of vague, but those are the things okay. I tell patients. Like right now, part of my sort of kit of what we can do is we can do the PRP, we can do stem cells, which I think is great. We can do the pressure wave therapy, which I'm just now adding, but I'm really excited about it. Um, the nitric oxide boosters um, and then just L arginine the amino acids and other nitric oxide boosters. yeah right? you the only problem with that in some people is you can't actually you can't they don't have if they have endothelial dysfunction that's too severe they can't they can't make the nitric oxide from the L arginine um, they don't have the pathways intact okay. um, not everyone have certainly it can be helpful in some people but um, but some people don't have that okay. so you've got to get right to the source and give the actual nitric oxide or you know the foods that have it okay and what about topical testosterone for women? Yeah, it can be helpful. Um, there I, are. I mean, vaginal topical. Not, yeah. Um, have you ever prescribed that, or is that a part of? Yeah, the I, for women, yeah. I do. Um, you know, I do hormone replacement as well. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, we I use vag. I use testosterone in general in women uh, frequently, okay. and specifically vaginal testosterone or DHEA, which is another okay. uh, hormone that's great vaginally, and estrogens. Of, of course, you want to do vaginally for vaginal health um, in a lot of women. Um, so those are all great. You can also 
you know, there's just other kinds of sort of compounded formulations that are vasodilators that you can use for women that are, um, they call them scream creams. It's, pr- <laughs> it's pretty, it's a pretty apt name. Like, like I, it is yeah. unimaginable if for a woman or a man if you've never experimented with putting a little testosterone on the woman. I mean, a tiny bit, not enough to yeah. grow a goatee. Very, very low concentration. It's not possible for that much blood to go there that fast, except it is. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of these form, you know, you can make formulations with several other things, with L-arginine, with mm-hmm. um, with different uh, vasodilators, as well as there's some some of them even have like Cialis or um, wow. sildenafil yeah, or testosterone. I mean, these are all compounded things. Um, mostly, I stick with um, just the bioidentical hormones um, okay. for women, but there are a lot and of options out does there. Does that work on guys? I've never tried rubbing testosterone cream into. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't. I don't think it would. I, I mean, I have male patients put testosterone on their scrotum, and that's a, <laughs> that's just for absorption. Right? For absorption, but I don't know what it would do, if anything, for the you know for the penis itself. Yeah, I, I don't think it does anything. And I'm sure I, somebody has tried it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I used a testosterone cream for years, starting when I was about 25, 26. I had almost no testosterone of my own, so I went on bioidentical replacement, which really helped in all sorts of ways, and, uh, not just sexual, but it was just like, wow, like, like, you know, my brain works. Yeah. The problem is, if you rub in your armpits where it absorbs pretty well, then it gets all greasy, so that's gross. So then you're like, I guess I'll shave my armpits, which is just a pain, right? And then now you still have this in, in there, but then if you touch kids or your yes. wife, you get testosterone on them, so then the only other place is you put it on the scrotum, and then you walk around all day with greasy balls. And that is also <laughs> equally unpleasant. So I, I'm a fan of like injectable because it's just less messy. Yeah, or pellets. Pellets are another I option. I haven't tried pellets. That would be that, cool. That are great because they oh. last four to five months and you oh, just wow. put them in once. I think um, I need some pellets. So pellets work well. I mean, obviously working on lifestyle is a great way to boost testosterone. Yeah. But, but not everyone can get can get as high up as they want. And people who have chronic diseases like diabetes or um, you know, heart disease and things like that that are gonna reduce their testosterone levels, you know, having, them, having them brought up with hormones can be effective and helpful. I went off of testosterone for a few years when I was doing all the Bulletproof Diet research. And I found if I was really careful and like didn't travel too much and was focused on sleep, I could keep my levels around 700. Yeah. Uh, but it was a lot of work. And frankly, sometimes I don't do all those things. So I find that taking a small amount of testosterone makes everything work better. So Yeah, it's, it's, okay. a, great, it's a great drug for the right people, for sure. Awesome. All right, anything else that you would offer for men or women looking to upgrade their sexual function? I think we've covered most of the things that I'm offering right now. I mean, I like five years from now, it's going to. And I love the idea. I mean, I'm ready to explore anything that is that we know is is works for other things. You know, the the low the light therapy maybe okay. that's something, and I would love to explore that. You know, th- things that are known to not be dangerous, that um, that we know can stimulate ATP production or nitric oxide production or different things like that. I think um, you know, let's do all of it. Let's let's figure out something that so that we don't have 40% of you know, 40 year olds having um, erectile dysfunction. All right. Well, Dr. Amy B. Killen, <laughs> still the coolest name I've ever heard. Uh, you practice at Dosere Clinic in Park City and what is it, dosere.com? Do- <laughs> The, the address? Yeah, like how do people find it? it? Uh, Doceryclinics.com. Oh, D-O-C-E-R-E. Or Docery Medical. I kind of have my oh. own I have my own sort of um, separate website that has oh. the sexual optimization oh. and aesthetic okay. stuff on it. What, what's that URL? It's Docery Medical. So D- oh, okay. D-O-C-E-R-E Medical.com. Dot com. Okay, yeah. cool. So that way when there's a mad rush of women looking to come in and have 25-year-old vaginas, <laughs> I'm not kidding, this is what happens. <laughs> Uh, or guys looking to like, oh wait, you know, I can be freed of these little pills or whatever. Yes. <laughs> uh, that would, uh, that's where you should go for this. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for being a guest on Bulletproof Radio. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed today's show, one of the things you could do to say thanks is you can leave a five-star rating on iTunes. That is incredibly valuable. But what I'm going to ask you to do today is even more valuable. Go to Amazon. Go to Headstrong, my brand new book that hit the New York Times. Thank you. Now I'm a two times New York Times bestselling author and I'm really stoked about that. But if you leave reviews on Amazon for that book, it really helps people understand how impactful it is. And if you're a long time listener, you've probably already bought the book. And if you haven't, there's 400 episodes of Bulletproof Radio now, actually probably more than 400. And that is 400 hours of time recording plus 
thousands of hours of prep time and editing and all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't cost anything. So all you have to do is buy Headstrong to say thanks, and I would be incredibly grateful if you did that. So have an awesome day.